dear students today i will summarize the content of the lectures covered in the course sustainable power generation systems of course this is a very brief summary of some of the important aspects of this course starting with the modules a total of 12 modules were prepared and total number of videos made to cover all the contents which was included in the modules 1 through 12 is 36 and if we talk about the modules like in first module we try to include the introductions of power generation methodologies in module 2 solar power generation systems were introduced in module 3 solar photovoltaic power generation systems were discussed wind power generation was discussed in module 4 hydro power generation systems were discussed in module 5 in module 6 biomass power generation systems were elaborated fuel cell and hydrogen technologies were discussed in module 7 in module 8 geothermal energy conversion systems were presented in module 9 ocean thermal energy conversion systems were discussed in module 10 tidal energy and wave energy conversion systems were elaborated various schemes of energy storage systems were discussed extensively in module 11 in module 12 energy economics of systems by considering case studies were elaborated so now if we try to get some idea how to make sustainable power generation systems based on the resource available so before we touch some of the very interesting aspects what we have discussed in this course let us spend few minutes time on the need of this kind of courses and practically the need of this kind of arrangement for power generation so why do you need sustainable technologies because we need energy so we need to produce energy and for production of energy we need to burn fossil fuels mostly because in today's days globally more than 70% of the energy is coming from the fossil based fuels and if we are doing so then we are emitting lot of carbon dioxide to the earth atmosphere that means we are contributing to the heating effect of the globe so if you see the carbon dioxide emission from fossil fuel for electricity generation it is increasing with time so here we have considered from about 1965 to some projections see the way carbon dioxide is increasing and also we are aware that we are already in a very dangerous state as we have crossed the safe limit of carbon dioxide in the earth atmosphere which is about 350 ppm and if we see the major countries contributed to the carbon dioxide emission so these are the countries like china india japan usa russia germany their contribution in emission to the earth atmosphere is more compared to the rest of the countries and if we see very precisely it is found that coal accounted for over 40% of the overall growth in global carbon dioxide emission in 2021 but we need to improve our quality of life 
that means human development index which is directly related to the amount of energy consumed by per person right so if we are burning more coals and we are trying to augment the quality of life that means we need to burn more coals again right so in order to reduce that the we need to rely on some kind of sustainable power generation systems which can reduce the carbon dioxide emission to the earth atmosphere and if we see this global forum meets at different levels like as this is where generated okay sustainable development goals and then cop 26 which was primarily mandated to reduce the carbon dioxide emissions then cop 27 was to implement the agendas or agreed points to implement and then recently g20 where 20 percent biofuel blend is going to be mandatory in indian context so these are the steps taken by the government bodies to reduce the carbon dioxide emission as well as for energy securities so what actually we are looking for some alternative resources or some kind of techniques which can reduce the carbon dioxide emission such as like energy conservations so for example if we have a plant for producing so some plastic products if we do some kind of energy assessment from that we can find out the scope of energy conservation that means we can reduce lot of carbon dioxide by doing energy assessment then energy efficiency so there are some of the components or machineries which are inefficient if we replace those machineries then it is expected to get higher energy conversions and at the same time we can have some advanced technologies which can be used for the existing plant which will be much more energy efficient so that way we can reduce the energy consumption which are indirectly related to the carbon dioxide emission to the earth atmosphere and of course we can go for clean energy initiatives that means we can go for solar energy wind energy hydroelectricity biomass energy wave energy otec energy and all other renewable energy systems so based on the resource available we can opt for the particular or suitable applications or suitable technologies for sustainable power generations we discussed many scopes also we have discussed some of the interesting aspects of connecting solar technology in combined cycle power plants so this is a gas turbine cycle the exit of the gas turbine is normally at very high temperature so this exit temperature can be used to run steam turbine so if we think the temperature need to be augmented so we can use solar field or maybe parabolic trough concept to increase the temperature of the heat recovery generation system and then we can use the steam which is produced by designing this efficient heat exchanger and that can be expanded in turbine and we can produce electricity and this will work in a closed loop right so this is one sustainable schemes and also we, we have discussed extensively about uh, wind energy conversion systems as you can see with time size of the plants are increasing okay so one plant can now give huge amount of energy right and also we have elaborated where this kind of plants can be installed and how big plant we can think of for energy harvesting based on the potential of wind energy also we have discussed very interesting 
aspects of waste management. So, if we have variety of waste, so this waste can be used for power generation. For example, if we have horticultural waste, paper waste, cow dung and then organic waste, then we can think of a integrated energy conversion systems. Say for example, this waste we can collect it and we can cut it to a small pieces and we can make pellets by using the pelletizer and these pellets can be used in gasification system to produce producer gas. And if we produce or if we have lot of organic waste, so this organic waste can be used in biogas plant for generation of biogas which is a composition of methane and carbon dioxide. So, this integrated approach to manage waste has already been elaborated in the video lectures just to give more emphasis on this kind of technologies because this is somewhat like future for management of waste. So, in kitchen waste we can have vegetable waste as well as cooked waste. So, once we clean the cooked waste that can be fed to the anaerobic digester to produce biogas and the slurry which has come out from the reactor can be used as a good fertilizer. And also that slurry contains lot of inoculums. So, that inoculums can be used for degrading the vegetable waste in a different reactor. And then finally, we can maximize the amount of biofertilizer production. So, that is how it is planned. So, we have kitchen waste, we can do pretreatment and it, it can go to anaerobic digester and also we can use cow dung and horticultural waste, paper waste and cow dung, we can mix it in a proportion and we can use briquette machine, we can produce briquettes and then we can feed it to gasifier system and we can produce producer gas and from anaerobic digester we can produce biogas and then these both the gases can be introduced in a dual fuel engine and we can produce electricity. And here the digested can be used as organic fertilizer and also we can enhance the quality and quantity by designing an another digester where we can optimally utilize the vegetable waste and the slurry. Right? So, this is one of the very interesting sustainable approach for utilizing different kind of waste in two different reactors for power generation. Also, we have discussed about integrated gasification fuel cell cycle. So, here we have a gasifier, okay. from here we can produce producer gas and we can do some kind of cleaning and we can also enrich the quality of hydrogen in the producer gas and then that can be fed to the fuel cell for electricity generation. And these clean gases can be combusted in a combustor of a gas turbine and an exit of the gas turbine we can have a heat recovery steam generator where we can produce steam and we can expand the steam in steam turbine and we can produce electricity out of it. Here we can have fuel cell, from fuel cell we can get electricity and we have two cycles. From gas turbine we will have electricity, from steam turbine we have electricity. So, this is a very interesting plant which is already installed in many of the developed countries. So, this is one of the sustainable approach of utilizing biomass for power generation. Also, we can have integrated gasification combined cycle. So, we can gasify and produce producer gas 
clean it and uh, introduce in a combustor of gas turbine, we can produce electricity. Again, we have heat recovery steam generator, we can produce electricity. So, that means we can couple two cycles gas turbine cycles, which is Breton cycle and steam turbine cycle. So, it is Rankine cycle. So, cycles are shown here. So, two different power we can produce. Okay. Also, we have discussed various schemes of energy storage systems, it may be mechanical, electrical, thermal. So, all the things we have discussed. So, we can hybridize those technologies. So, here strategy is something like if we are producing more energy during off peak hours, that energy can be utilized to pump the water from lower head to the upper head and we can store it. And when there is a requirement of energy during peak hours, then we can discharge the water which is stored in the upper reservoir and we can produce electricity to meet the demand. Also, we can couple solar photovoltaic systems, wind energy converters and also we can have some kind of AEM electrolyzer to produce hydrogen or finally, we can have electricity. Okay. So, this kind of hybrid technologies are also one of the sustainable technologies in the near future. At the end, we have discussed techno-economic analysis, different schemes we have discussed and finally, we have done one case studies involving electricity generation from biomass pellets in certain districts. So, these strategies were followed like crop cultivation data we need first, then crop residue data, then we need to procure pelletizing plant. So, what are the cost associated with the pelletizing plant, then power generation unit. So, we need to buy the gasifier for example, and then associated auxiliaries for power generation systems. And then we can find out like what could be the power unit cost of electricity generation and then we can go for different methodology for economic analysis and we can find out how many years will be required to get the money back that is payback period and NPV. All those analysis we have done and we have demonstrated in the video lectures. We have used references of this list or you can say we have used many references, not only these references what is listed, there are some other papers which we referred while preparing the presentations. I hope you have got an overall idea of sustainable power generation systems and hope this will be very much helpful to you in your life for implementing this kind of sustainable power generation systems at different levels. So, thank you very much for watching this video and registering in this course. Thank you very much once again, all the best.